Welcome to the Bergstrom Air Conditioning Seminars. At Bergstrom, we're here to help you. We'll provide you with practical knowledge that leads to the best performance for your air conditioning systems. In this seminar, we'll show you how to maintain and service your air conditioning systems. We'll go through the different system components and give you the best tips for maintaining and servicing them. By knowing and understanding the correct maintenance and service procedures, you'll be able to keep your air conditioning systems running at a more efficient level. Let's start with the compressor. The compressor compresses vapor refrigerant, so it flows from high pressure to low pressure throughout the system. The oil, which provides lubrication for the compressor, is also carried throughout the system with the refrigerant. The first place to start servicing and maintaining the compressor unit is oil level. Anytime the air conditioning system has a part removed, the compressor oil level must be checked. Be aware that some compressors come from their manufacturer with higher oil charges than others. So if the amount of oil is more than required for the size of system you're servicing, you may have to drain some oil from the compressor. When servicing a compressor, there are some things you should not do. Flushing is one of them. Do not flush the compressor. Plus, don't flush the receiver dryer, accumulator, expansion valve, or orifice tube. Microchannel condensers cannot be effectively flushed. These components should be replaced. Only flush the following components. Tube and fin style condensers, evaporator, and hoses. Then purge each component with nitrogen after flushing, but not with shop air. During the flushing procedure, most of the refrigerant oil is removed, so add the total oil charge for the system. If reusing the existing compressor, check oil in compressor and subtract it from the total system oil charge. The correct amount of oil to add should meet the OEM specifications. If there are no specifications available, the total oil system charge should be 2 to 2.5 ounces for every pound of refrigerant in the system. When replacing an old compressor with a new one, drain and measure the oil from the removed compressor. Then remove the oil from the new compressor and refill the new compressor with the same quantity of oil drained from the old one. If there are no inspection plugs, add oil to the compressor through the discharge port. Do not add oil through the suction port. Turn the compressor hub several times by hand to make sure no oil is trapped in the compressor chambers. The next component to look at is the condenser. The condenser is like a radiator for refrigerant. The hot refrigerant vapor travels through the condenser tubes and heat is transferred from the refrigerant to the fins. Then, as the cool outside air flows past the fins, heat is transferred to the air. The vapor is cooled and condensed and turns into liquid. Damaged or clogged fins on the condenser can reduce condenser capacity, resulting in higher than normal system operating pressures. So it's important to inspect, clean, and straighten the condenser fins on a regular basis. Next is the receiver dryer. The receiver dryer is a filter. It filters debris that would plug the expansion valve. A moisture remover, it collects moisture that would create acids in the sealed system, damaging metal components. It's also a refrigerant storage tank. Always replace when installing a replacement compressor or when the system is open to the atmosphere for an extended period of time. If you suspect you have a restricted or partially restricted receiver dryer, you can find out by performing a simple test. Turn the air conditioning system on and allow a few minutes for it to stabilize. Then, using an accurate contact thermometer, Measure the temperatures of the dryer's inlet and outlet pipes as close to the dryer as possible. A difference of more than 10 degrees Fahrenheit between the readings indicates that the dryer may have an internal restriction and needs to be replaced. Now, some tips on servicing the accumulator on the orifice tube system. The accumulator protects the compressor from liquid refrigerant entering the suction side of the compressor. Liquid is stored in the accumulator, which allows only vapor to be extracted. Some contain moisture-absorbing desiccant if an inline dryer is not used. Failure of the desiccant container could result in a clogged or restricted accumulator, resulting in reduction in cooling performance. 
The most common symptom of a clogged accumulator is little or no cold air blowing from your air conditioner vents. In addition to keeping liquid refrigerant out of the compressor, the accumulator removes moisture and debris from the refrigerant in the air conditioning system. If the accumulator becomes clogged, refrigerant will not properly circulate, which leads to decreased cold air. Let's look at the expansion valve system. The expansion valve, through a small orifice, changes high temperature, high pressure liquid to low temperature, low pressure liquid. It also controls the amount of refrigerant flowing through the evaporator, which ensures all liquid refrigerant exits as vapor. Expansion valve proper metering is critical to the total operation of the air conditioning system. Normal internal wear on system components causes some debris to go through the system. In the case of a major compressor failure, the receiver dryer traps most of the debris from the compressor but some debris may find its way into the TXV and begin to plug it. The only way to be sure the valve is clean is to put it back into operation and run a system performance test. The TXV's values are preset at the factory to accommodate the system for which it is installed. If a defective TXV is suspected, replace only with the same part or a valve with the same capacity in superheat settings. Next, the orifice tube. The orifice tube is used to control the amount of refrigerant entering the evaporator. It changes high temperature, high pressure liquid to low temperature, low pressure liquid through a tube that's similar to that of an expansion valve. The refrigerant passes through the evaporator and leaves as a liquid. An orifice tube is a very simple component with no moving parts. About the only thing that ever goes wrong with them is clogging from debris which always requires orifice tube replacement. If replacement is necessary, replace it with the same part number. Now, let's talk about the evaporator. Air blows through the evaporator via the evaporator blower motor, while cool refrigerant liquid moves through the evaporator tubes. Heat from the inside of the vehicle is then transferred to the fins, from the fins to the tubes, and from the tubes to the refrigerant. Refrigerant liquid then evaporates into a vapor. Clean debris and examine the evaporator for any signs of leaks. Recover refrigerant and replace the evaporator if it is leaking. To learn more about both systems, be sure to watch our additional seminars, Air Conditioning System Components, Air Conditioning System Types and Operations, and Air Conditioning System Troubleshooting. They're very helpful in keeping your air conditioning systems running great. Thank you for your time. At Bergstrom, we're here for you.